Hi everyone, I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Talking about science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. This is episode 90. And here's a rhetorical question. Do you watch science videos in class? Of course, you know, we all do. But what do you do after watching the video? How do you get students to respond to the video? Now today, I want to share three activities and at least two of them I developed that I use to get my students to connect with the video they just watched. All right, so before we continue though, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP90, that's nine zero, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, strategy number one. Shout out to Christopher Rositis, former science teacher at McGee Secondary School in Vancouver for this first strategy. Now, I got off of him when I was subbing for him 20 years ago. Yep, I've been in the game for that long. And I use this strategy for longer videos and documentaries. Think about Planet Earth or Bill Nye videos. So basically, here's what happens. On a separate sheet of paper, I get students to write down a T chart. And then on one side, the heading, what I know, and on the other side, what I learned. And during the video, students take down 10 to 20 notes from the video in total on either side. So for example, it could be five and five, it could be two and eight, whatever, whatever they learned or whatever they already know from the video. At the end, students tally up their points and they hand this in. Now in the past, I used to mark these out of five, but now I just scan them to see what my students find new or old. And I find this strategy really good for having students connecting previous knowledge with the current knowledge they see in, through the video. Okay, strategy number two. I just came up with this one and I like to call it top tens. I use this with classes after we watch like a science news video. So for example, we just saw one on CRISPR and how it's used or how it's being used to cure sickle cell disease. Now after the video, I show students a list of top tens. Well here there are nine topics. These topics are issues that science is trying to solve. And then I ask students to rank these topics but also to include the topic that was in the video. So for example, where would sickle cell research be on this list, right? So this is not in order. Again, they got to reshuffle this and place sickle cell research in there. Now students write down the rankings on a separate sheet of paper, and then we discuss their rankings. Now one thing that students realize is that no one has the same rankings. Not the top 10, not the top five, not even the top three. And this is important and interesting because it's indicative of funding initiatives. You know, more popular topics sometimes get more money than others. And who determines what's popular? Well, us, people in power, people with money. You know, thus, the, the best idea is not always the one that gets the most funding. And that's an excellent point to bring up in class. Okay, so besides having this, the top 10 initiatives, you can also have other top 10s, like the top 10 scientists and their contributions, the top 10, top 10 inventions, the top 10 discoveries. I find, again, I find the strategy good for having students connect a video with other science concepts. Okay. My final strategy, strategy number three, I have students write out statements to one to three, one to three prompts that I post. And these three prompts are always the same. Prompt number one, what I just saw makes me think about something else that I saw in another class because, uh, prompt number two, what I just saw makes me think about the time I, because, and prompt number three, what I just saw makes me think about the future, because. And students complete these prompts. Of course, they have to write out the because. And that's kind of where kind of the connections form, right? It's the because. It's, it maybe makes me think about English class, or it makes me think about the time I did this, or it makes me think about the future. I collect the responses, and I share a few anonymously. And sometimes we'll discuss it a little bit more. And I find this strategy a good way to connect the video with something else in, their, in my students' lives. Try out 
these three, vid these three strategies and let me know how it goes. And this, that's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below. Give me some feedback. All right, handouts once again are realsciencechallenge.com slash EP90. Thanks for watching. Let's talk science education again soon.